in the video now and the video that follows it, we are solving exponential and logarithmic equations. And I broke it up into two videos simply for time purposes. Um, you'll notice a lot of the titles of these examples, including the one-to-one -one property. And let me uh, use example one part A to kind of show the one-to-one -one property. So in this example, I have 16 to the power of something and 4 to the power of something, and I've got to figure out what x is. Since 16 is 4 to the second power, I can rewrite this as 4 squared to the x plus 3 power equals 4 to the 4x plus 7 power. And I hope you remember from algebra that when you're raising a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So now I have 4 to the 2x plus 6 equals 4 to the 4x plus 7. And what the 1 to 1 property is telling me is that if I have 4 to the 2x plus 6 and 4 to the 4x plus 7, there's a 1 to 1 relationship between these exponents. And what that means is I can just rewrite my equation as 2x plus 6 equals 4x plus 7. And then solve for x. So 2x equals negative 1, and x is negative 1 half. In part b, what I need to realize is that 9 fourths is 2 thirds to the negative second power. Let me clarify. Um, 2 thirds squared would be 4 ninths. And you know that when you take something to a negative power, you're taking the reciprocal of it. So my left-hand side of the equation doesn't change. But on my right side, I have 2 thirds to the negative 2 times 3x over 4 power. When I simplify this, I have 2 thirds to the x minus 5 equals 2 thirds to the negative 3 halves x power. And then we solve for x. x minus 5 equals negative 3x over 2. I don't like that fraction any more than you do, so I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 2 and get 2x minus 10 equals negative 3x. So when I subtract 2x from both sides, I'll have negative 5x equal to negative 10, and x is 2. When we're solving a logarithmic equation, one of the strategies that might be helpful to you is to remember that you can rewrite a logarithm as an exponent. So what you might want to start to do is get the logarithm by itself. So in example 2 part a, maybe divide both sides by negative 3. So we'll have the natural log of x is equal to 8. Remember what this means. The natural log of 8 is log base e of x equals 8. I can rewrite this as a, an, express, an exponential equation, and it would be e to the 8th equals x. Well, look at that. I've, I've got x by itself. All I have to do now is type into my calculator e to the 8th power. And that is 2,981 approximately. Part B, start the same way. Get the logarithm by itself. By subtracting 4 from both sides, I would have negative 3 times the log of 5x equal to 12. Dividing both sides by negative 3, I'd have the log of 5x equals negative 4. 
it might be helpful to remember that when we see the word log and we don't see a base, that's log base 10. So you might write this as log base 10 of 5x equals negative 4. And when I rewrite that in exponential form, I have 10 to the negative fourth power equals 5x. 10 to the negative fourth power is 0 0.0001. And if that equals 5x, then what I'm doing in my calculator is taking that and dividing it by 5 to get Zero 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 two equal to x. In this example, the logarithm already is by itself, so you could go ahead and rewrite it in exponential form. And it would be 3 to the fourth power equals x squared minus 3 to the fourth power is 81 equal to x squared minus 1. When we add one to both sides, we've got 82 equal to x squared. So x is positive or negative square root of 82. In this example, we're being asked to use the one-to-one -one property and once again, notice, I have log base 6 of something on the left-hand side, log base 6 of something on the right-hand side. I could just set those two expressions equal to each other. So 2x will equal x squared minus x plus 2. And now I've got a quadratic with x terms, so I want to get everything over to the right-hand side. So I'll have 0 equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. When I factor this, I have x minus 2 and x minus 1. So x equals 2 or x equals 1. In the next example, you want to be very careful. I can't just drop the log base 12s completely out of the equation yet. I need to compress the right side first. So left side, I just have log base 12 of x plus 3. On the right hand side, I have a sum of two logarithms of the same base, so I'm going to compress that as the logarithm of a product. So it'll be log base 12 of 4x. And now I can drop the log base 12s out of the equation and have x plus 3 equals 4x, so that 3x equals 3 and x is 1. These next examples are where things start to get a little dicey. Um, I can't use the one-to-one -one property, and I can't rewrite a logarithmic expression as an exponential one in these. These are all exponential equations. And, but I will tell you that starting off writing it as a logarithmic equation is where we're going to start. So what we start with these equations to do is to take the log of both sides. And you can take the natural log or you can take the common log. Either way, you'll end up in the same place. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of 8 to the y power equal to the natural log of 0 0.165, because I'm allowed to do that. The next thing that we're allowed to do is on the left-hand side, we have a natural log of a power. Remember, we can take that exponent in the power and bring it to the front of the expression as a coefficient. So that's my next step. So I write this as y times the natural log of 8 equals the natural log of 0 0.165. And now, hopefully you see very clearly how we're going to get y by itself. We're going to divide both sides of the equation by the natural log of 8. So y equals the 
natural log of 0 0.165 divided by the natural log of 8. And that's just typing it into your calculator. So 0.165 natural log divided by 8 natural log equals negative 0 0.87 approximately. And rounding to the nearest hundredth is appropriate when we're solving logarithmic and exponential equations. In part B, we're going to eventually do the same thing. However, you do want to get that power by itself. So subtract 3.1 from both sides first. And we have 1.43 to the n power equals 5.38. Now the equation is ready for us to take a log of both sides. Natural log of 1.43 to the n power equals natural log of 5.38. Bring the n as an exponent out in front as a coefficient now. So I'll have n times the natural log of 1.43 equals the natural log of 5.38 getting n by itself by dividing. We divide both sides of the equation by the natural log of 1.43. So n equals the natural log of 5.38 divided by the natural log of 1.43 that we then type into our calculator. and get 4.70. Before I erase the screen, you may want to pause the video to make sure you've gotten what you needed from this screen before I erase in order to do part C. In order to do part C, I get the power by itself. Oh, hey, look, it's already by itself. And now I take the log of both sides. Now, because the power is e to the power of something, taking the natural log is totally your best option because look at what's going to happen. We'll have the natural log of e to the 2 plus 5w equals the natural log of 12. But remember what the natural log is. It's a log with base e. So when we consider that the natural log of e is the same thing as the log base e of e, then I can just bring this down and have 2 plus 5w equals the natural log of 12. And then you just solve the equation like you normally would. 5w equals natural log of 12 minus 2. And I would get w by itself by dividing both sides by 5. So w equals the natural log of 12 minus 2 divided by 5. And that's what you type into your calculator. And that is 0.10 approximately. 